recommending to the House of Representatives to find Brian Pagliano in contempt of Congress for refusal to comply with a subpoena duly issued by the Committee on Oversight and Government Reform. Our first and only item for consideration today is a resolution and report recommending that the House of Representatives find Brian Pagliano in contempt of Congress for refusal to comply with a subpoena duly issued by the Committee on Oversight and Government Reform. The Clerk will designate the report. Resolution recommending that the House of Representatives find Brian Pagliano in contempt of Congress for refusal to comply with a subpoena duly issued by the Committee on Oversight and Gover Government Reform. I intend to offer an amendment in the nature of a substitute to the report, and without objection, we will call up the amendment in the nature of a substitute, and then I will recognize myself to give one statement on both the ANS and the underlying report. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Mr. Chaffetz of Utah to the resolution recommending that the House of Representatives find Brian Pagliano in contempt of Congress. Without objection, the amendment is considered as read, and I now recognize myself for five minutes in a statement to report on the, on the report and the ANS. Today, the committee will consider a resolution and report recommending Brian Pagliano be held in contempt of the House of Representatives. Subpoenas are not optional. Mr. Pagliano is a crucial fact witness in this committee's investigation of former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server to conduct government business. The release of these Federal records is of deep concern to the committee, and we have the jurisdiction over Federal records, we have jurisdiction over National Archives, we have an, uh, jurisdiction in several places. Over the course of the investigation, we learned some of the information about Mr. Pagliano's involvement in Secretary Clinton's use of the private server. Mr. Pagliano originally worked for Secretary Clinton in her 2008 presidential campaign as an IT specialist. As he was closing out her campaign's computer equipment, he received a call from Justin Cooper, who testified before this committee last week. It was Mr. Cooper who requested Mr. Pagliano build a server for Ms. Uh, Ms. Clinton in, in early 2009 as she started her new job as Secretary of State. Several months later, in March of 2009, the two men met in the basement of Clinton's Chappaqua residence to install a new ser server Mr. Pagliano built. Mr. Pagliano continued to monitor and maintain the server while Secretary Clinton was at the State Department. After he set up the server, Mr. Pagliano joined Secretary Clinton at the State Department as a Schedule C appointee in the Bureau of Information and Resources Management. Resource Management. By law, Schedule C appointees are required to report to a presidentially appointed position, but there were no presidential appointees in the Bureau of Information and Resource Management, make, making Mr. Pagliano's employment arrangement unusual at best. Other employees in his bureau later questioned his ability to support a private client's email server given his capacity as a full-time government employee. Mr. Pagliano left the State Department in February of 2013, the same month as Secretary Clinton. Even though he worked at the State Department for almost four years, the agency has been only able to find a handful of emails. We have questions about this. Mr. Pagliano's emails are Federal records, just like Secretary Clinton's emails, and subject to production in response to a Freedom of Information Act request. The, the Committee has jurisdiction of both the Federal Records Act and FOIA. We also have a long record of oversight, investiga investigative, and legislative work in this area. The Committee subpoenaed Mr. Pagliano to appear at a hearing on September 13, 2016. He did not show up to that hearing. I explained Mr. Pagliano was uniquely qualified to provide testimony to help the Committee better understand Secretary Clinton's use of a private email server. This is undisputable. I also made clear the Committee would consider all options regarding Mr. Pagliano's failure to appear, including consideration of recommending he be held in contempt. The Committee then heard several hours of testimony from Mr. Cooper, who was also involved in setting up Secretary Clinton's email uh, server. Mr. Cooper, to his credit, explained a lot. We did appreciate his participation in answering all the questions that this committee asked. Throughout his testimony, Mr. Cooper routinely referred to Mr. Pagliano as the individual more appropriate to answer questions who knew more about the server. It was clear from Mr. Cooper's testimony, his words, not ours, that we needed to hear from Mr. Pagliano. Mr. Pagliano's attorney asserted asserts because his client took the fifth before the Select Committee on Benghazi, he shouldn't be required to provide testimony to this committee. That is not a good faith argument. 
It makes no sense for a number of reasons. First and foremost, the Select Committee's jurisdiction is limited. It only relates to September 11, 2012 terrorist attack in Benghazi. In contrast, this Committee's jurisdiction is broad and includes both legislative and oversight of the Federal Records Act and the Freedom of Information Act. Questions about these two topics alone are well outside the purview of the Select Committee's investigation. Secretary Clinton's emails and Mr. Pagliano's were subject to both of these laws. Mr. Pagliano could explain what he knew or what he was, or was told about those, these laws. He could tell us whether or not they were considered by him or others in setting up Secretary Clinton's private email server. Mr. Pagliano's testimony could provide important information informing legislative reforms that this committee may want to consider ensuring that this disaster never happens again. This includes reforms based on how he was able to prevent the State Department from locating most of his emails. Another key difference in last month, this committee had the benefit of reviewing the testimony Mr. Pagliano did provide during his interview with the FBI. The Select Committee never did see that 302. Nor was the Select Committee aware of the thousands of classified emails that traveled over uh, Secretary Clinton's server when they spoke with Mr. Pagliano. This Committee's questions are broader and more informed than any questions posed by the Select Committee, making a comparison unnecessary. Further, answering a number of, of these questions could never subject Mr. Pagliano to criminal liability. The Department of Justice has confirmed Mr. Pagliano was granted immunity before he spoke to the FBI. Director Comey confirmed that he, he was recommending no charges be brought against anyone involved in the matter. Attorney General Lynch accepted the recommendation and closed the case. Under those circumstances, Mr. Pagliano has no fear of criminal liability preventing him from answering questions before this committee. The committee recessed its September 13th hearing with Mr. Cooper to give Mr. Pagliano another opportunity to show up and testify. To clear up any ambiguity created by Mr. Pagliano's six lawyers about whether they would confirm service of the prior subpoenas, which they refused to do, we had the U.S. Marshals personally serve him. We scheduled the continuation of the earlier hearing for this morning, but once again he failed to show. This committee cannot operate. It cannot perform its duty, nor can any committee of Congress, if subpoenas are ignored.